Echo Yankee Golf. Thanks for identifying uh, 2,600 feet. Proceed direct and NT on course. Just working on higher for you. There's uh, icing in the cloud today, possibly up to 5,000 feet. And Echo Yankee Golf, I'd uh, have to level you off at 5,000 feet today. I believe that would be right in that cloud layer. Are you okay going 3,000 to uh, Waterloo? Ask for five. Uh, we'd rather go up to 5,000. Uh, Echo Yankee Golf? Okay, Echo Yankee Golf, climb now 5,000 feet. Climb 5,000 feet, Echo Yankee Golf. That's why, as you think about what you're going to do on departure. Go Yankee Golf Tower, passing through 2,000 feet. Contact Toronto, 133 decimal 4, wind 290, 12, gusting 22, clear takeoff, runway 30. Uh, over to Toronto, passing through 2,000, clear takeoff, 30, I think it's off. All right, all set. Ready to go. Air speed's alive. See a little bit of right bank appearing. Yeah. So a little left ailerons. There you go. That's better. Gear up. And it flaps up. We'll bring up power down. Here is up and safe. Good afternoon, Toronto. Uh, Fox Echo Yankee Golf 2300 climbing 3000. I'll try to Echo Yankee Golf, Toronto Terminal. Squawk Ident maintain 3000 feet. Squawk Ident maintain 3000. Echo Yankee Golf. Echo Yankee Golf, thanks for identifying it's uh, 2,600 feet. Proceed direct and NT on course, just working on higher for you. There's uh, icing in the cloud today, possibly up to 5,000 feet. Roger, uh, direct and NT, uh, Echo Yankee Golf. Yeah, correct. NT, enter, enter, nav, GPS, holding, holding 3,000 feet. So what should you do here for the icing? Because we obviously got to three without getting into it. So I would leave it off right now, okay. and the second he gives you the climb, turn it on. Okay. Because he could hold you here like all the way around the corner. They, they can fly you the whole way to Kitchener at 3,000. Okay. Now, if you were in an airplane that wasn't well protected for ice, you might actually want to say to him, can we actually just stay at 3,000? Right, right. Right. But in this case, you're better off to go get some experience. And see what a little bit of ice looks like. Okay, so our lights are off, our pumps are off, flaps are up, gear is up, um, our pitot heat is on. I think we're in good shape. A little bit 46 knot headwind, yeah. yeah. <laughs> seems to be a, a theme with you and it, me. It, it seems to be a theme with me and DA62s. That trip I did in Nunavut, we had a headwind on every single leg except one. <laughs> And Echo Yankee Golf, I'd uh, have to level you off at 5,000 feet today. I believe that would be right in that cloud layer. Are you okay going 3,000 to uh, Waterloo? Ask for five. Uh, we'd rather go up to 5,000. Uh, Echo Yankee Golf? Okay, Echo Yankee Golf, climb now 5,000 feet. Climb 5,000 feet, Echo Yankee Golf. Okay. So we're on that. And we're going to go flight level change. Good. We're going to go nose up. And of course, under any normal non-training circumstances, you just say at 3,000, right? Yeah. Why would you fly an icing if you don't have to? 
but I'd, I'd like you to get the experience, see what it looks like. And today's a perfect out because if we have icing, we can't get a, we have a problem with, we can't get it off. We can get down. We just land in Kitchener. Yeah. Right. Just plus three or something there. We just wait for five minutes, it all falls off. I mean, when you're coming from an airplane that doesn't have ice protection, you yeah. should be extremely nervous <laughs> about it because it'll overwhelm an airplane like a DA40 extremely fast. Yeah, yeah. If you have a fixed pitch propeller, it's even much, much worse. Now, am I expecting to see anything coming off the wing at this point, or? Uh, you may take about a minute or two, but you will, you will shortly. Yeah. Dashboard two four seven three, climb five thousand feet now. Five thousand feet, dashboard two four seven three. Usually takes about two to three minutes before it starts to really flow. If you want to see it right away, you just put it to high and then press the max button. You'll see it within a few seconds. You'll start to see it forming on the tip of the spinner is one of the first places you'll see it. Right. So the very tip of your spinner, you'll see the color will start to change. Contact around departure now for higher 128.8, good day. 128.8, dashboard 473, good day. And Echo Yankee Golf, how's it looking right now? I'm unable to hire, uh, are you okay at 5,000 feet? Uh, we're good at 5,000, Echo Yankee Golf. Excellent. Um, so I've got de-icing pressure low. So overcome that, go to the high. Clear the cast because you don't want anything blinking, and then we'll wait until it clears, then go back to normal. Okay, and you can now you can see the fluid yeah. starting to run. Yeah. You'll notice the tip of your spinner is starting to have a little bit of different color to it. Yeah, yeah. And you can actually see a little bit of ice building up on the terminal, uh, terminal Charlie on the Fox 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 as well. Delta Tango. So still got uh, 1,100 for 2,000. If you look at the wing Project area Bravo between your root and your engine, you'll also see a little bit forming in there. Yeah. And then soon, you might see it already, you'll start to see it on your vortex generators as well. So since we're flying in Climb 3, 000, uh, Delta visible Tango. precipitation, you should turn the alternate air on as well. And Bravo Delta Tango, contact around departure for hire on 128.8, good day. There you go, we just leave that on until we're out of the clouds. 128.8, Bravo Delta Tango, good day. I was just looking at how much run there is. The whole wing looks good. On my wing, though, there's a gap where it just seemed to be flowing. Oh, well, that's, that's where the stall warning is, though. Okay, all right. So it doesn't flow very... There, there's no um, DKS around the stall warning. But the stall... Is the stall warning heated? Yes. That's that's on the same switch as this, right? Right, okay. So for the windshield one, it just works just like in the car. Yeah. You press and hold it for as long as you want, and then the stuff comes off. But it does take about 30 seconds to a minute for it all to run away. So should I... So when you're on short final, is not the place to do it, basically. Okay. But should I do it now, or...? There's no need. The temperature's above zero there, so you can press it if you want to see what it looks like. Yeah. Right, just so, you, just so you know what it looks like, but... So just how long do I hold it down? I, it just like when you're holding the spritzer in the car until you're, until you're happy. But you know what I mean? Like when you're when you're whitewashing your window, it's like if it's really dirty, you might hold it down for 10 yeah. seconds. If it's just like a little mist off the guy in front of you, you just kind of give it a spritz. You know, if you know the temperature on the ground is like plus five, I'm not going to do that. Right. I'm just going to wait until I get low enough and then it all just slides off the top. But you see, you see how it's taking a while to like clear off? The slower you go, the longer it's going to take, of course, to come off because it's viscous. Right. Oh good, so now the leading edges are starting to get the slushy stuff on it. You can see it on your side and on my side. Okay. You'll see it's starting to build like a slush. And so what happens is, is that slush builds up enough mass and then that just slides backwards on the wing. So the little ticking you're hearing there? You hear that little tick? I thought I heard something. Yeah, yeah. that's ice coming off the repeller hitting the fuselage. Okay. So once we get around the corner there, we'll ask it to do a hold at the Menti fix, followed by the ILS for two six. At the, at, do you want to hold? Sorry, not Menti. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what the hell's the name of the call there? Mapum. Sorry, Mapum. That's not on our flight plan, though. No, it's not. It's part of the ILS approach. Okay. So if you pull up the plate for the ILS 26, and we'll hold at the starting point to the northeast called Mapum. Mapum. Okay. Yeah, so we'll ask to do a hold at Mapum, followed by the ILS for 26. Okay. Fantastic. Now you put it in the minimums of uh, 1255 or 1260. Yeah. But that's assuming the temperature is above zero, right? Okay. Do we know if it is or not? Uh, we're at plus two. Cool. So you're good to go then? Definitely something you always want to make sure you're thinking about, though, especially this time of year in the shoulder seasons. Right. Right when it's January and it's minus 30 and you know it's cold, you should be remembering that. But I'll tell you, even last night I was coming in and I'm like, oh, yeah, right, it is wintertime now. Nighttime approach into an airport, like, 
it was a relatively clear night, but still, you got to make sure that cold weather correction is there. Anyway, so what we'll do is we'll ask to do a hold there at Mapum, followed by the approach. So once you're done the approach, they say you're clear for the ILS runway 26. That means you're responsible for all vertical, all lateral navigation. Okay. So the first thing you do is start your descent down to the MSA. Okay. Right? Don't unsuspend and don't slow down. No, 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 no. Just start down to 3,200 feet, and then you figure out the rest of stuff. Okay. You know, do I do I unsuspend the hold right away? Do I wait until after? You know, do okay, I want to? You off the shaft off your left side, about uh, two miles northbound, 2,000 feet above, no factor. To that caravan. Roger, I can't get off. That's under that 200 feet above. Good. Now on the mist, we'll ask them to give us radar vectors for a second ILS to two six. Okay. Oh, we can make best advantage of our time. As you see the ice in there between the engine and the uh, and the fuselage, of course that you can never get rid of, and that's why this is a training flight. So I want you to see the ice. Yeah. I want you to see the airplane can hold it. But also, look, we have lost some speed. Right, we're only going 145 now with 90% power. Right. So we are we are losing our speed. But the key is there. That's always going to happen with ice. You're always going to have ice out there. Yeah. The question is, is it getting thicker? over time or is it being managed by the system and to me it looks like the system is managing it pretty well it's we've been constantly having about a quarter of an inch of slushy stuff out there if you start seeing it get thicker we know we got to make a change to doing something, yeah. yeah and of course that's why we can do this sort of thing on a day like today if we go down to 3,000 feet we're out of the ice right so where's our out we just literally asked to go down to 3,000 echo climb 3,000 and 3, there's echo, no, more any, no more at no more threat level at all at that point, I'd probably say hit the TKS to max, blast all this stuff off, and then we just go do something else. Yeah. Yeah. The ceiling out there was like 200 feet right now. There's absolutely no way I'd be willing to do this. <laughs> well, and we're not far from getting up above this stuff, too. Exactly, yeah. And as we are in the ILS approach coming down towards minimums, you'll start to see big chunks flying past. You know, a piece on the radome, you may just go flying past the window. Uh, little bits from the engine they sell would break away and go flying by. It's, uh, it's, it can be a little distracting, yeah. but that's that's very normal. Indicated it's like down at one, 138, 140. Yeah. Very normal. Now, this is something that comes into your planning purposes too, though. Let's say you go, I can handle the ice, there's no problem. You go, yeah, but could you, can you handle the loss of 20 knots of your airspeed? I was say, like, you have the fuel. Yeah. All of a sudden, if you if you pick up that loss in the last hour, Okay, well, maybe you lost 20 miles of range. Pick it up in the first hour, now you've lost 80 to 100 miles of your total range. Because yeah. that fuel flow, obviously, is unaffected. But I don't see a world where I would fly in this looking for a whole flight. No, you shouldn't do that. I mean, I would fly through this to get on top. Yeah. Um, the only reason we're doing this is so you get to see it. Otherwise, there's no way I would do this. It doesn't make sense for so many reasons, right? For one, is a, a risk, a safety risk. But secondly... You're using up an expensive fluid, like it's 10 bucks a liter basically, so it's an expensive fluid we're going through, um, and you're also slowing down your speed. So it's kind of like you're getting the worst of everything. But on a training flight, you could justify all of those things, because the reality is we were at our destination before we left. Right. So if you wanted to save money, we should have just gone home, right? Gone out for a beer. Exactly. Safest thing a pilot can do. Now, when you're on top like this, will the ice, like, naturally lift off? Or yep. Yeah, it'll sublimate just, away. Just being in the sun? Yep, it'll just sublimate away over about, uh, probably about a half an inch per hour. Okay, Echo Yankee Golf, contact Toronto Center, 128.27. 128.27, Echo Yankee Golf. Good afternoon, Toronto. Uh, Fox, Echo Yankee Golf, 5000. Charlie Foxtrot, Echo Yankee Golf, Toronto Center. Good afternoon. Altimeter at Waterloo is 2986. Eight is India. Let me know your intentions. Uh, 2986, and uh, we'll get India and let you know in a second. Echo Yankee Golf. Roger. Uh, you already knew your intentions, though. Oh, I know, but I need to review it with you so I don't sound like a total idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Toronto, uh, Fox, Echo Yankee Golf. Echo Yankee Golf, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we're on a training flight. We'd like to do a hold at Mapem, uh, followed by uh, the ILS for 2-6 uh, at the uh, Kitchener. I can, I can go. Echo Yankee Golf, Roger. Proceed direct to Mapem and advise ready to copy your holding clearance. Uh, direct Mapem and uh, ready to copy now. Echo Yankee Golf. Echo Yankee Golf, Roger. Cleared to Mapem via direct. Uh, hold direction of your choice. Maintain 5,000 and expect further clearance, uh, we'll say 2015. So 
So uh, cleared to hold at Maypum Direct. Um, uh, our discretion on the hold direction and at 5,000 feet. Expect uh, further clearance at 2015. Echo Yankee Golf. Echo Yankee Golf, thanks. That's all correct. So just advise once you're established in the hold and when you're ready for your ILS. Uh, will do. Echo Yankee Golf. And it's just uh, the one approach, or do you plan to do more? Uh, no, we expect to do a second one, um, and for the second one, we'll, uh, we'd like to have vectors for that. Echo Yankee Golf. Echo Yankee Golf, Roger.